repeated measures ANOVA. First, we'll look at setting up our data. Before we run our repeated measures ANOVA, we need to ensure that our data is set up properly. So if you recall, uh, in previous weeks, we've looked at how to run independent ANOVA designs, where we've had just plain, simple, independent ANOVAs, where we've looked at the influence of one independent variable on one dependent variable. And we've also looked at factorial designs, where we're looking at more than one independent variable on a dependent variable. So in those cases, uh, if we're looking at an independent design, we have an independent variable or variables that is made up of categories. And then we have our dependent variable that is measured at the interval ratio level. And then SPSS uses those categories. So if we look here, course sections, so we have A, B, and C. Uh, and then compares those groups on our dependent variable, which is well-being. So in this case, uh, when we're looking at an independent design, the independent variable is clearly its own uh, observed variable in the data set. And the dependent variable is also its own observed a variable in the data set. When we're dealing with repeated measures designs, it's a little bit different because um, in a repeated measures design, each participant participates in all levels of the dependent variable. So that means that um, in this case, uh, if we look at course section here, we only have um, par these participants are in section one, and these ones are in section two, and these ones are in section three. Whereas for repeated measures design, we would need to have all 10 participants in each of the course sections. So to do that, you actually need to create a dependent variable for all of the levels of the independent variable. So let's say that we're interested in looking at how energy varies throughout the day, and we ask people to report their energy in the morning, afternoon, and evening. If we were to put that in SPSS, it would look something like this. So we have energy in the morning, energy in the afternoon, and energy in the evening. And we can see here that we have scores for all 10 participants at all three time points. So when you're setting up a repeated measures design, it's important to make sure that the dependent variables are separated by all of the levels you're interested in looking at. And it's actually through the analysis that you're going to tell SPSS that the independent variable is actually time, even though it doesn't actually appear in the data set. So we don't have a time variable anywhere. We just have the measures of well-being at all the different time points we're interested in measuring. So this is an important distinction to make between independent designs where there is clearly an independent variable and a dependent variable and repeated measures designs where we don't actually really have an independent variable but we can see that we have all of the different levels of the dependent variable represented by their own separate variable. Next we'll look at how to run the analysis. So now that our data is set up properly, we can run our repeated measures ANOVA analysis. So to do this, we're going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and then we're going to click on Repeated Measures. So before we can look at the regular dialog box, we have to specify what the within subject factors are. So these are within subject variables. So essentially what we need to do is name the independent variable. So in this case, we're looking at morning, afternoon, and evening. And we want to see if there are differences depending on the time of day and how people's uh, well-being changes or, or energy, sorry, energy. Uh, so what we would have to do here is name the independent variable. So it's not going to appear in the data set, but we're still going to use it for the analysis. So in this case, we'll just call it time. And then we have to tell the SPSS how many levels this variable has. So how many different uh, measurements are there for time? So in our case, we have measurement in the morning, afternoon, and evening. So we can tell SPSS there's going to be three. Uh, once we've added text here and a number there, we can click Add. And SPSS will carry this down. And we now see that time is made up of three levels. Okay. So now, so once we have uh, this information here, we can actually just skip the bottom half of this box and click Define. So what this opens is something that looks like our normal analysis window, except that it's a little bit different because we have these lines of text right here. So what this is actually telling us is that in order to run the analysis, we need to fill in these three question marks with the three variables that represent our repeated measure. So in our case, we have morning, afternoon, and evening. Uh, it's very important to make sure that you put these in the order that you want to analyze them because when it does the post hoc comparisons, it's going to use these numbers here, 1, 2, and 3, to make the group comparisons. So it's in your best interest to make sure that they're in an order that makes sense. So if it's a time order, 1, 2, and 3, uh, make sure the first time point goes on the first line. 
So in our case, we're looking at morning, afternoon, and evening. So we can move these over and we need to replace each one. And once they're filled, you'll notice that this OK button uh, becomes active. So that means you could actually just click OK now. But first we should uh, make or uh, do a few things. So we'll skip everything under model. Uh, we'll skip everything under contrast. Plots, if you'd like, you can put the variable here just on the horizontal axis and we can look at it. So we'll click add. Uh, notice that it's used time. So what we specified as being our uh, independent variable, it's using that here. So we can click OK. Um, post hocs, if you click here, you'll notice that nothing is available. Um, that's because these post hoc options are only for independent measures. So in our case, we have a repeated measure variable, so there aren't any options that we can select here. We have to go through a different um, option in order to select those analyses. So you can skip save, um, and then if you click on options down here, this is where we're going to still ask SPSS to generate our descriptive statistics and our estimates of effect size, but we also want to get the uh, repeated measures uh, post hoc analyses. So we have to click on time here, move it over to the display mean box, click on compare main effects, and then once that's activated, you can select the Bonferroni test here. So if you recall, when we're looking at post hocs on a repeated measure, we want to use the Bonferroni post hoc comparison. So once these are selected, we can click OK, and we can actually run the analysis. OK, so we have our results. Uh, so the first uh, uh, table is always going to be the list of the variables that we have, as well as the measure they represent. So we he see here that our independent variable is time, and we have three time points. And morning is associated with one, afternoon is associated with two, and evening is associated with three. Then we have our descriptive statistics, so we can see the mean for morning, afternoon, as well as the standard deviations, and we can see the evening. We can also see how many people there are per group. Uh, if you recall, since we have the same people in each group, even though we have 10 people per group, it still means that overall our data set only has 10 people. The next table you can actually ignore. Uh, these are the multivariate tests, so we're going to be ignoring that for now. Uh, you can delete it if it's confusing you, but... Uh, you don't have to, you can just skip it. So the next thing we need to look at is the test of sphericity. So Mockley's test is looking at whether the differences between the means of each group are, um, sorry, the variance of the differences between the means of each group are close enough or at least somewhat the same. So we have here the W statistic, um, an approximate chi-square that goes with this. So you don't have to worry about that. The degrees of freedom for this test and then the significance value right here. So this is the most important one you want to look at. And in this case, we have a non-significant value. So it means that we don't have any issues of sphericity. So it means that in the table below, we can interpret the line that says sphericity assumed since this value is larger than 0 0.05. So that would mean we're interpreting this line and this line. However, had this been significant, so had it been smaller than 0 0.05, we would have to look over to this box here and we would look at the value associated with the greenhouse geyser uh, epsilon. And if it's above 0.75, you're going to make the Hunfeld correction below. If this is uh, below 0.75, you would make the greenhouse geyser correction. So in this case, we don't have either correction to make since this is not significant. However, had this been significant, and since this value is above 0.75, in the table below, instead of interpreting this sphericity assumed uh, line of text, you're going to interpret the Hunfeld corrected line of text. So what this means is that instead of reporting the degrees of freedom for the regular model, you're going to report them for the adjusted model. And then you're also going to report the adjusted F and P value and uh, effect size if necessary. So in this case, uh, we're interpreting this line. So we have two degrees of freedom. And then below here, we have 18. So although this table does look confusing, it is just the model and error lines from our NOVA table as usual. It just doesn't have the same look to it and all these extra lines of text, text really uh, bulk it up. But you can still see here that this is this first the assumed line. So the model, um, so we have our sum of squares model, degrees of freedom model, mean square model, and then the F ratio right here. And then we have the same thing here for error. So sum of squares error, um, so residual, the degrees of freedom for the residual, the mean square for the residual, and then finally that's contributing to the F ratio here. Um, so again, had there been 
a adjustment to make, we would have just simply interpreted one of the different lines and made sure that we adjusted the degrees of freedom where necessary. Uh, so the partial edit square is right here. Um, in this case, you can't, the SPSS doesn't generate um, all of the sum of squares that you need in order to calculate the effect size by hand. So you can just report for repeated measures designs the adjusted uh, edit square or R squared. They mean the same thing. Next table, we have our table of contrasts. So we can actually ignore this. And then we have the tests of between subjects effect, which we're going to ignore for the time being as well. So this brings us to our post hoc analyses. And what we can see is that SPSS has generated three tables. So we just have the mean information here. So we can see the means of each group. Uh, this should reflect the same information up here, which it does. Um, and then we have our pairwise comparisons. So we can see here that it's been done using Bonferroni. And what we can see is that there's no difference between times one and two, since this is significant. However, one and three is different, and two and three uh, are different from each other, but two and one are not. And if you look at the actual values here, since they're identical, it makes sense that they're not at all different from each other, whereas they should both have the same relationship with uh, time three, and they do. So what we can conclude here is that people report significantly more energy in the evening, but they do not differ uh, between the morning or the afternoon. So this last table here, the multivariate test, you can ignore that again. And then finally, uh, we'd asked SPSS to generate the plot so we can see that the mean of time one is here, mean of time two is there, and then it jumps up for time three. So this is everything you need uh, to run a repeated measures ANOVA in SPSS, as well as how, uh, the information you need to interpret the output. So in this case, most of the boxes are not necessary, but we've identified the ones that you do need to look at. All right, so thank you.